What's up everybody, Bandit Chad here for another Taco Tuesday. So as you may be able to see out the windows here, it has snowed overnight, uh, but nothing will slow down the Taco Bandit production team, and uh, apparently nothing will slow down our class schedule as well. Uh, but we do have a little bit to talk about this week. We did mention last week that uh, there will be a Tacoma World meetup at Flagpole Knob, which is outside of Harrisonburg, Virginia, which is one of the trails that we often frequent. We are gonna definitely try to go to that. We have signed up. Uh, I'm definitely pretty likely to be there. Chad's gonna try to be there if everything works out, I believe, right? <laughs> if, if classes don't get in the way. But, right, right, yeah. which are obviously not as important as, as four-wheeling, but... Um, <laughs> So we do hope to see you all there. If you do plan on going, please sign up on the uh, on the Tacoma World Forum. I'm sure that would definitely be appreciated for those guys, and, and we hope to see you there. Uh, but in, in other news this week, we are off of spring break and uh, back down here at school, but we do have kind of some ongoing projects that you'll be seeing on the channel before too long. So while we were on spring break, we did meet up with a fellow YouTuber named Chuck Does Stuff, and uh, we got a little bit of a tour around his truck, right? Yes, yeah, we got to look at his truck and review it, so be looking for that review later this week. Right, and uh, we also kind of left a ongoing project uh, of each of ours uh, back at home, but we, we do hope to be getting that down here before it's too long. Uh, mine was a, the next modification to my truck, which I've been trying to keep under wraps, but if you have been following me on Instagram, uh, you probably have a pretty good I idea of what's coming. Also, uh, you started kind of a, a new chapter, right? Right, yeah, something new. We're not gonna talk about it yet, but it is something pretty exciting, um, and be looking for that within the next month or so. Right, and really, in all, we're just trying to diversify, uh, you know, c kind of our, our viewing group. You know, a lot of you all are Tacoma owners, uh, specifically third-gen owners, uh, but with this next vehicle, it's it's gonna definitely reach out to a, a, uh, a broader, uh, range of people exactly yeah exactly but we're really really excited about it and uh, also we're gonna be doing a little bit of a uh, project here over the weekend on a forerunner uh, we're gonna be adding a rear locker to that and hopefully I'm gonna get some good good footage of that uh, while we're working on that but um, you know, be sure and stay tuned for all that we do have a lot of content heading your all's way uh, so if you haven't already please do uh, you know subscribe and follow us regularly we have been trying to put up at least one to two videos uh, per week so so be sure and right. keep an eye out for all of that so as you can see behind us there is a tundra and that brings us to the next thing we want to talk about um, as you may be aware if you've been keeping up with Toyota stuff there is a million mile tundra out there that Toyota got their hands on they bought it from this guy he owns his own company I believe and he puts a lot of miles on his tundras um, and this one made it to a million miles in, I believe, eight years. Uh, Toyota did buy it back from him, and they gave him a new Tundra in replacement. They want to tear down this Tundra, and they've been doing that for the past several months. And, you know, what they found wasn't too surprising. You know, it is a Toyota. It's known to last pretty long. Um, it didn't have any major rebuild, no engine rebuilds, no transmission rebuilds, just, you know, normal maintenance, oil changes, maybe a water pump or something like that. But, you know, that kind of does lead Toyota to look at that Tundra to help them build upon it um, in the next generation. So it'll be pretty interesting, you know, the other things that they might find and improve upon in the future. So uh, there's some other Toyota news too, isn't there? Exactly. So if you all have been following kind of the sportier cars of Toyota, you'll know that the uh, Toyota GT86, which we just recently got here, in the in the United States is very similar to the uh, Subaru BRZ and the Scion FRS which was just killed off and uh, basically someone was making a comparison between you know that um, trio of cars because they all are relatively the same and built at the Subaru factory in Japan I believe um, but they're comparing those vehicles to the Celicas of previous generations and then saying, you know, with the new Supra coming out, there is one sports car that's missing from the Toyota lineup, and that's the MR2. Uh, now, if you all are aware of the MR2, it was a mid-engine sports car. Uh, it was just a four-cylinder motor, but, uh, you know, it was a very, very sporty car and definitely different from what Toyota generally does with their vehicles. You know, it was kind of a radically designed, it was kind of Toyota going out on a limb to provide a pure sports car experience, but with more of the Toyota reliability that we were just talking about. Right. Um, but, you know, that was brought up to one of the executives at Toyota, and he said that actually an MR2 will be joining the lineup as soon as possible. Now, 
that's kind of uh, interesting because that's the first time that we've heard anything about that. Uh, but Toyota, it sounds like we'll be having three sports cars in their lineup once more. Now, I wouldn't start pinching your pennies now and expecting this car to be joining the lineup here within the next you know, year or two. You know, With all of that needing to be ironed out, I'm sure it could take quite a while before we see an MR2 in production form. Uh, but this is the first time we've heard about all of this, so we want to keep you all informed the best we could. And uh, honestly, I think it's pretty exciting news. So riding around here on this snowy, cold winter day here in Blacksburg, it's definitely nice to have those uh, heated seats. And I, I think Chad definitely enjoyed his heated seat modification that we did on his truck. Mm -hmm. um, but that's definitely appreciated if you do live in these colder climates. But this pretty much wraps up everything we have to talk about for today. Uh, we do plan on having a Frequently Asked Questions video part three uh, here in the coming weeks. So be sure and get all of your questions submitted um, you know, we will be sure to, you know, do the truck updates about our fuel economy and everything like that. And, uh, you know, if you have any further questions, be sure and put those in the comments or message me through Instagram. And we'd be happy to feature those questions here on uh, that video. So thank you all for tuning in again on this Tuesday. Have a fantastic week, everybody. We'll catch you next time. See you guys.